Hi, I'm Jeff Hajek, the owner and founder of Election. This video is part of my lean training system. It was originally released as a DVD a long time ago, but times have changed and the look of some of these LTS videos is now a bit dated. The content is still spot on though. So rather than just discontinue the line, I am posting the majority of each of the 36 videos here with the remainder available at Velaction Videos. That's our video service where you can download a wealth of supporting content and watch subscriber-only videos. I recommend subscribing and hitting the notification button if you want to make sure you don't miss any new content. I would also really appreciate if you would hit the like button if this video is helpful and you want to see more content similar to it. The like button helps us get found on YouTube, but it also lets us figure out where you want us to put our future effort. Now enjoy the free version of this video. Welcome to Vlaction Continuous Improvement's presentation on value stream mapping. I am Jeff Hajek, the owner and founder of Vlaction. We've got a few basic objectives on what we'd like you to take away from this training. First, we want you to walk away knowing what a value stream map is and what it is used for. On top of that, we want you to see the value in this extremely important tool. Second, we want to teach you the basics about creating a current state value stream map. You won't get good at value stream mapping until you've done it a few times. Our goal of this video is to get you comfortable enough to go out into your production areas and start putting pencil to paper. Now, it would be rather difficult to create a value stream map if you didn't even know what a value stream is. So let's start out by addressing that question. In a nutshell, a value stream is the series of activities that you have to do to provide a product or service to a customer. There are a few things to note about this definition. While value streams are traditionally thought of as shop floor tools, they also apply to administrative processes. It can be tricky to apply value stream maps to office environments, but the payoff is well worth the effort. It is just important to know that the tool works in services as well as with physical processes. I'd also like to point out that some definitions of value stream include the information flow as part of the value. I tend to believe that the information, unless it is actually the output of the process, is not part of the value. Rather, it just enables the value. For most businesses that have not yet started aggressively applying continuous improvement to its processes, the flow of value is rather impeded. You can think of it as a meandering stream. There are lots of pools and backwaters and rocks and sticks and other things blocking the flow, making it far less efficient than it could be. A value stream map is a tool that lets you figure out where all those obstacles are. The obvious goal is to remove those impediments and continuously streamline the flow. I just touched on an important concept, but I wanted to address it here again. As most people with a cursory understanding of VSMs know, they are very useful for tracking the value stream of a physical product. But they are also great when the product is information. Think of a loan process or an ordering process. There are a series of linked activities that move the information through time and space to satisfy a customer. Be careful about whether or not the activities are truly providing value, though, or if they are just a supporting process. For example, the materials management process is not a value stream, even though it contains a bunch of connected processes. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that value stream maps only work for repetitive processes. For example, it may be difficult to create a value stream map for a job shop. The flow of products through that system are simply too variable to get the full impact of a value stream map. That's not to say that a value stream map can't be useful in a mixed model line, though. It simply means that there has to be the potential for some consistency in flow. I hope you are getting something valuable out of this video. If you want to get more out of this program, we recommend watching it on Velaction videos. You'll be able to watch the entire video, mostly ad-free, and view subscriber-only programs. You'll also have access to a load of continuous improvement downloads. So now we talked a little bit about what a value stream is. Let's move on to what a value stream map is. 
A VSM is simply a snapshot view of how work flows through your system. This visual tool makes the opportunities for improvement jump out at you. So here is a sample of what a value store map might look like. In this example, we look at Jimmy's lemonade stand. He does a pretty brisk business and now needs to streamline his process in order to keep meeting customer demand. Let's look at this example in more detail. The top section highlights how materials and information flow through the value stream. Information flow is generally shown in the top middle of the map. In this way, it is easy to connect information transfer between suppliers, customers, and the different processes within the company. Each process should also have an information box associated with it. These boxes not only show what you know, but also what you don't know. Generally speaking, when I look at a process, if the management team and the employees doing the process can't give me basic information, it acts as a red flag. You absolutely have to know how you're currently performing if you expect to get better. Speaking of people, I'd also like to point out that the value stream can be eye-opening to teams. Many times, people are unaware of where they fit into the big picture. This tool lets them see how their role fits into the value stream. Another big thing that this current state value stream app does is provide you with a backdrop upon which you can overlay your continuous improvement efforts. Seeing improvement opportunities visually on a VSM prevents you from taking a haphazard approach to Kaizen. Without the value stream map, it is easy to fall into the mode of a dog chasing a squirrel. It is very easy to get distracted and pulled away from what is important. This lack of coordinated effort is often called Kamikaze Kaizen. While these unlinked projects can provide gains, these improvements are generally local in nature. They do little to improve the flow of the entire system. I do want to make an important distinction here. The term Kaizen is not used consistently throughout the Lean community. For some, it means a week-long improvement project. I, however, use the term Kaizen to describe any improvement activity, no matter how small. This would include daily improvements made by frontline employees. I don't recommend putting every single possible improvement on your value stream map. Focus on the larger projects that may require coordinated effort. Kaizen events, those week-long projects I mentioned earlier, fall into this category. Remember, a value stream map is a communication tool. One of the things you want to communicate is how resources should be used to get the biggest bang for the buck. Now that said, the bulk of daily improvements are not going to be linked directly to the value stream map. They should, however, still be prioritized based on KPIs, daily management, or countermeasures. The point I'm trying to make is that you don't want to limit individual improvement effort because it can't be seen directly on a value stream map. All of those little gains as long as your team members understand the big picture, will add up. Just be sure that when you pull people away from their day-to-day -day efforts, you set them up for the biggest improvement opportunities possible. The final point of this slide is that when you put all of your improvement opportunities onto your current state value stream map, you are, in effect, creating a link between the present and the future state. This presentation will focus on creating that current state map, but I want you to view it with the end in mind. The purpose is not just to create a map. The point is to use the map to create a plan that will transform your current reality to that future vision. Unfortunately for most businesses, they are not structured to support a value stream. Think about how an order might flow through an organization. You may have an inside sales team working directly with customers to help them make their purchasing decisions. Once they decide to buy something, the customer or the inside sales team may submit the order to a group that processes the paperwork and gets the fulfillment process flowing. Finally, an accounting team may get involved to handle payments before the order ships off to the customer. Now let's think about the customers that these groups service. You may have two groups with very different needs using the same resources. The typical organization for a company is by function. A sales manager oversees the inside sales team. Different managers handle each of the other functional silos. 
The problem here is that the focus tends to be on optimizing locally. There is often little thought given to streamlining the end-to-end -end customer experience. In practice, it means that the order entry manager may be able to save 15 minutes of work by passing 5 minutes of work on to the sales team. From a company standpoint, it makes sense. To the already swamped inside sales team, there will be pushback on taking on more work. So what's the alternative? Value Stream Managers A personal accounts manager can optimize processes for this sort of customer. A commercial accounts manager can do the same for her business-oriented customers. If they see an opportunity to make things better, they don't have to worry about these internal barriers. They do what is best for their customer. They may still have some sort of process managers handling things like order entry, but their role is subservient to that of the value stream manager. As part of the lean training system this video comes from, we offer a variety of lean Lego training packages. These include our lean Lego flow simulation, mistake proofing or pokey oak lean Lego exercise, and our visual controls and 5S lean Lego exercise. We've also got an office flow simulation for those not implementing continuous improvement on the shop floor. Click the links in the description below or click on cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. So how do you go about identifying a value stream? Obviously, the first thing you have to do is identify the value they provide. This sounds simpler than it actually is. On the shop floor, value added work is generally easy to spot. In the office, however, it is not as cut and dried. I generally tell people that if you want the volume of the work to go up, it likely adds value. We would like the number of orders that are received to rise. We would not, however, want phone calls about order status to go up. It takes a bit of finesse to figure out where to put this sort of work into your value stream. As a rule, I prefer to see it in the info box of a value added process. The cycle time would be rolled into the process it is related to or it would show up as a defect. Once you've got your value stream selected, you'll need to find some product data. Now the data collection aspect of the value stream map is very iterative. You have to gather some data, move forward in the mapping process, figure out your information gaps, go back and collect more data, and then go back to the mapping process again. This may take a few cycles depending on how complicated your system is. But in the early stages, you want to do the best you can to gather up the data on your product mix. On the shop floor, this is generally easy to do because you have sales record and item numbers. For administrative processes, it can be more tricky. You have to make the distinction between value-added and non-value-added work, and you often have to start collecting data as much of this work is not tracked as closely as physical products are. The reason why you want to understand this product mix is that many of your products even though similar, follow a different path and thus have a different value stream. The tool we use to distinguish value streams is called a Product Quantity Process Routing Table. This tool helps you group similar products into a family that shares the same value stream. Let's take a look at what this PQPR table is. Start out by listing all of your products into a single column. The term work unit here can be applied to either a product or a service that you deliver to the customer. You then enter the average demand and calculate out the percent of the total demand. Note that this is by quantity. Sometimes items with a lower demand can chew up a lot of resources. We are not worried about that at this point. Right now, you are looking solely at the numbers produced. All of the processes that these same products go through are then listed on the top line. Note that not all products will go through all processes. For each product, go through and write the sequence of processes. Some products will double back and may even go through the same processes twice. For example, a part may be machined, then something else welded onto it, and then machined again. When you've completed adding the sequences, group the products with similar routings into families. In this case, it becomes apparent that two distinct products are manufactured in a similar way. Combining them into product families helps you produce more efficiently. 
proper preparation can make or break your value stream mapping efforts. I really want to stress this point. If you don't have all your ducks in a row before you start mapping out a value stream, you dramatically increase the risk of things going bad. In the best case, a minor problem will simply cost you a little bit of time. In the worst case, you can seriously damage and erode trust. Make sure you are properly prepared before you hit the floor. So how do you prepare? Well, the first step is to understand all the things you need to do. As I mentioned, preparation is extremely important. If you are not well prepared for your value stream mapping effort, it will likely fail. There is also some general higher level preparation that I would like to point out now. Don't take on value stream mapping until you can do something about what you learn. What do I mean by this? Well, there is a lot of effort that goes into creating a value stream map. It uncovers many problems and opportunities in your organization. One of the worst things you can do as a manager is highlight problems that you do nothing about. For this reason, I don't recommend jumping right into value stream mapping at the beginning of a lean journey. Instead, spend some time developing the skills that you will need to fix the problems that you highlight. If you do that, your value stream map will be seen as a useful tool. If you simply do the mapping exercise and nothing changes, it will be viewed as a waste of time and will add to frustration and dissatisfaction to the workforce. But once you're prepared and have the tools to do something about your value stream map, the next step is to actually create your current state VSM. Once that is complete, you use the current state as a launching point for your future state value stream map. And this is where the ability to do something about the problems you find manifests. Once you have your future state value stream map, you have to identify the specific tasks you need to take to move from the current state to the future state. Now, to be clear, I am not saying you have to know everything before you start value stream mapping. I encourage you to continuously learn as you go. All I am saying is that this is not the point to get bogged down having to learn basic tools like 5S, Standard Work, and Kanban. Your team should also have solid problem solving skills. You want to demonstrate a bias for action and build momentum. That does not happen if your team is not trained in the skills you are asking them to perform. And, of course, once you make a plan, you have to execute it. I would like you to keep one thing in mind as you begin moving through this cycle. Remember that it is a cycle. You only have so much time available. Find the sweet spot where you can make an aggressive plan without overtaxing your resources. If your plans get a reputation for being wishful thinking rather than actually being accomplished, value stream mapping will quickly lose credibility. You don't have to do everything at once. Pick the opportunities with the biggest bang for the buck and focus on them this time around. Eventually, in subsequent cycles, you will work your way through all of the opportunities you have identified. Let's get a little bit more specific about the timeline now. The planning phase can take about a month to complete. The two things with the longest lead times are scheduling your senior leaders who will be involved in this project and data collection. If you don't have the right information available, you will need to set up systems to collect data prior to your value stream mapping effort. The current state value stream map exercise generally takes about a day, give or take a few hours. The exact duration will depend upon the complexity and size of your value stream. Just don't let it turn into an extended event. If it takes much longer than a day, you are probably looking at things in too much detail. That day should include the full team for the entire mapping exercise. Don't allow people to get on a team if they cannot commit to 100% attendance. After the current state value stream map, do the future state map. I recommend trying to do it on consecutive days if possible. If you suspect that there will be a need to collect further data, or if there are scheduling issues, it is acceptable to schedule it in the near future. Just don't let too much time pass or people will forget about what they've seen. Again, the full team should be involved. You may also need to call in additional people to get ideas on changes to make. Arrange for the support people to be available during the exercise. Creating the action plan is a bit more fluid than the current and future state maps. 
I recommend meeting to create a skeleton of the plan and then continue coordinating after the team wraps up their mapping efforts. Many of the tasks will take quite a bit of coordination and will be difficult to lock in during a single session. The improvement window for a value stream map should typically be around three to six months with a bias towards the high side. Six months is a good window that lets people stay focused on the improvements with enough time to accomplish quite a bit. If it is longer, people get distracted by other things that they prioritize over the goal set off in the distance. They often end up doing all the work in the final six months anyway. If it is too short, it is hard to make substantial progress to close the gap between current and future state. As you start your value stream mapping efforts, the first thing to do is figure out who is in charge. In many cases, the value stream manager will be the one initiating this effort. In other cases, though, a senior executive will get the ball rolling. He or she may call on a facilitator to work with the value stream manager. In those situations, it is important to make sure that the facilitator is working with the right person. What we're looking for here is to find the first individual who has authority over the entire end-to-end -end value stream. This is often not as simple as it sounds. Consider a typical manufacturing operation with several work areas. These may be overseen by an operations manager. But quite often, there are other processes that are managed by someone else. In this example, shipping and receiving is managed by the materials manager. So the first value stream manager we have might be the vice president of operations. This is important because global optimization, meaning activities that positively impact the throughput through the entire value stream, sometimes requires that one group takes one for the team. Without a value stream manager focusing on the big picture, managers can find themselves butting heads. Of course, this presumes that the value stream manager is on board with the concept of building a continuous improvement culture that streamlines the value stream. If the value stream manager is resistant to change, improvement will be an uphill battle. Even if this value stream manager is resistant, though, I still recommend completing the value stream map. It may go outside of the boundaries of what you can accomplish on your own, but don't underestimate the power of a well-developed value stream map. They are great tools for convincing leadership of the opportunities that are in front of them. One of the key things to do before attempting to make a value stream map, and certainly before making any changes, is to communicate what is happening to the team. You want to start off by making sure people know what you are doing. And it's also a good idea to show examples of what a value stream map can help a team accomplish. I recommend that you look into taking benchmarking tours to see other organizations that are doing this well. On top of the training that you provide to your team members, make materials available to them so that they can continue to learn more on their own. The more they understand about value stream maps, the less resistant they will be. And finally, make sure that you communicate specifically why this is going on now. If there is a crisis, be frank about it. If there is an opportunity presenting itself, let the team know. If this is just because a new leader has done it before, and has seen the power of value stream maps, tell the team. The less in the dark they are at the onset of change, the more trusting they will be down the road. It's also important to be very clear about what is going to happen and what they are going to see. This means telling them when to expect activity and who they should expect to see. It is also a good idea to be clear that there will be a lot of questions and prepare them for this. The next point is a rather important one. One of the big changes people see when you start focusing on becoming a continuous improvement culture is that there is a lot more measurement. If people are not used to seeing individuals timing their processes or walking around taking notes on clipboards, it can be very unnerving. Those sorts of things, at most companies, are linked to problems and disciplinary actions. Make it clear that this is simply part of the improvement process. Most people also like to know how long things will take. Having observers in their work area will be uncomfortable for most employees. It is helpful for them to have an understanding of how long this discomfort will last. The last thing to communicate is what happens after the value stream map is completed. 
make sure that they understand the concept of value stream management. This is especially true if there will be some changes in leadership structure. Tell people what will happen with the information that they provide. One of the big knocks that continuous improvement efforts get is that data collection falls into a black hole. They see initiatives start and never see the fruits of their labor. Related to this, make sure that people have a good idea on who to go to if they think of anything else that will help the value stream mapping team. What tends to happen is that people think about the answers they gave and ideas pop into their heads later on. Some people simply disregard these ideas, thinking that they don't have the power to act. Others, though, will see the potential of the value stream map and this effort you are undertaking and will want to provide feedback. Make sure they know how to do that. And finally, give people a timeline. Don't make them sweat out the changes. Get more out of our Lean Training System videos with our Continuous Improvement Companion. It's closing in on a thousand pages of great content. It is currently available as a download with a subscription to Vlaction Videos and as a license through our store. You can also get a free version of it by signing up for our newsletter. Click the links in the description below or click on the cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. There is an ongoing debate about the best format to use for a value stream map. I'm not talking about the form or the layout of the map. There's not a lot of disagreement there. The question is about the medium. Should value stream maps be done with a pencil and paper or on a computer? When value stream maps first spiked in popularity around 20 years ago, technology and software tended to be a barrier to mapping. Graphics software was extremely unportable, which led to value stream maps being completed from memory in a conference room. Software tools were ungainly, which meant that teams, which often include highly paid individuals, sat staring at a person trying to manipulate a graphic on an uncooperative piece of software. So what I recommend, especially in the early stages of your company's value stream mapping learning curve, is that you start out by using pencil and paper on the shop floor. Then you can transfer the information to a computer later. I know that this falls into the waste of overprocessing, but it is better than the alternative. The goal of value stream mapping is to get people on the shop floor so they can see the entire process. The act of drawing it out reinforces the lessons that first-hand observation provides. Why would you need to digitize the map? For one thing, it is easy to share once it is computerized. But this can also be accomplished by taking a picture of a hand-drawn map. There is a benefit to using graphic software, though. Modern programs make VSMs much easier to edit than they were in the past. As the data changes or as you make improvements, you can quickly update the information. While some people like using sophisticated tools for this, I preach simple is better. A PowerPoint slide is easy for most people with the basic knowledge of the program to edit. Don't overcomplicate things. In the spirit of continuous improvement, though, if you come up with a better system for using a technical means of documenting the value stream map, even on the shop floor, by all means, test it out. Just make sure that you weigh the costs and don't detract from the learning that comes from the mapping process. Another way you need to prepare for your value stream mapping exercise is to have all the equipment you need available before you start. The first thing you need is a pencil and paper. I tend to recommend larger pieces of paper, legal size or 11 by 17. This gives you much more space to work with. If you're doing a very small value stream map, this may not be necessary. It is also useful to have a clipboard available to you so you can write wherever you observe a process. The reason you are writing in pencil is so you can change things as you learn more. Obviously, this also requires an eraser. Bring a stopwatch to the shop floor as well. While you probably will not be taking detailed cycle times during your value stream mapping exercise, you should be able to get an accurate time if one is not available. I tend not to trust estimates or values that were not timed within the last few months. If you are working in a company with a fairly well-developed continuous improvement culture, you may have accurate cycle times available. Feel free to use those if you trust them. Just be careful about using secondhand information. You will be basing future improvements on this data. If it is inaccurate, 
you will not get good results. Be sure to bring a calculator as well. This is helpful for determining defect rates, tack time, and the like. Finally, bring a video camera. I don't recommend taking videos of people without their approval. Make sure you tell them what the video is for and how you will use it. Videos are useful to have when you start discussing improvement opportunities. The nice thing about these last three items is that nowadays, most people carry all three of them around in their pocket. Smartphones are very convenient to have while doing value stream mapping. Another helpful way to prepare for a value stream mapping exercise is to gather data in advance. A seasoned value stream mapper can walk through the process ahead of time and identify the data that might be needed. Gathering this data before a team meets can significantly improve the current state value stream map. The fewer data gaps it has, the more quickly the team can start identifying opportunities. The first type of data you should gather is about your customers. Make sure you know what the tack time is. That's the required pace you have to produce to that keeps up with customer demand. It is calculated by dividing the time available by the demand during that period. Also make note of any special requirements that the customers might have. If you have any specific product data, such as defect rates, available, make sure that you record that. Process data is also helpful to have. As I mentioned, you can do quick timings of the process as you walk through it. If, however, cycle times are excessively long, you might want to gather the data in advance. You can also use this opportunity to look for hidden factories. Those are the backwater processes where things like rework or special situations are managed. And finally, look into any equipment data that might be relevant. One of the most common pieces of information to fall into this category is downtime. This video comes from Velaction's Lean Training System, which takes a module-based approach to learning about continuous improvement. Modules include a PowerPoint presentation and student guides for every video, plus there are many exercises and quizzes as well. There's also a whole host of supporting content in the form of terms in our Continuous Improvement Companion and downloadable articles. Our modules are currently available in our store and as downloads at Velaction Videos. Click the links in the description below or click on the cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. Value stream mapping is a team event. It is possible to do it alone, but having multiple sets of eyes on value stream makes the map that much better. There is also a large benefit to the discussion that comes among team members. Things like deciding how to depict special situations or any special information that might be needed are often uncovered through discussion. It is even more important to have a team as you start looking for opportunities in developing your future state map. So, who should be on the team? The value stream manager should certainly be on the team. He or she often has an eye-opening experience during this process. It is surprising how often a leader does not understand the nuances of his or her operation. You also want to have a team of stakeholders. This means the people that are vested in each of the processes should be included. The team size should be kept manageable even if there is a large number of work areas that will be mapped. When a value stream mapping team has too many people on it, they become intimidating to the frontline operators. It also gets harder to manage the different ideas. You can also prepare a support team in advance. These would generally be people who are available to answer questions but may not be necessary for the whole process. For example, someone from the IT department or from facilities may be asked to remain available and on call. This will keep the team from losing time tracking down people who have information that they might need. It can also be helpful to have a facilitator during the mapping process, especially if the team does not have a lot of experience. The facilitator can help smooth out conflicts and prevent potential problems from occurring. The facilitator can also act as a trainer and mentor to the team as they become more familiar with this tool. Once a team gets on the shop floor, there are several tasks that they will have to accomplish. These should be assigned to the team members prior to starting the map. This is another case where the facilitator can benefit a team. 
they will be able to explain the ins and outs of each of these tasks to avoid mistakes. The timer will record cycle times or other activities that may be part of the value stream. For example, they may want to know how long materials remain on a conveyor system or how long glue takes to dry. By far, though, measuring cycle time is the most common role of the timer. The data collector will gather up other pieces of information that are relevant to the value stream map. This might include recording the number of operators or getting information on machine uptimes, yield, batch quantity, etc. While everybody should take notes, the team should have a formally designated note taker. This person will record any additional information that the team needs to gather at a later date or anything that needs further clarification. This person keeps the official team record. One person should be designated to count inventory. It is important to get an accurate understanding of how much work and process is in the system. The key here is to record the backbone items. You don't have to go through and count each and every widget that will be attached to the main unit. Designate a single person to be the interviewer. It can be intimidating to have a barrage of questions pepper a frontline employee. When it happens, the individual tends to get confused or shuts down. Assigning a single person to be the voice of the team makes the interviewee more comfortable. The final task is to draw out the map. I like to have each individual make a rough draft of the value stream. You'll find that when the team gets back to the conference room to go over what they've learned, there will invariably be things that are missed. The more people that are writing things down, the better the likelihood is that somebody has the information that you need. Let's talk now about team size. The ideal team is about five to seven people. This gives you a good opportunity to get the right mix of background and experience while not overloading the individuals you will be interviewing as you walk the value stream. Try not to get over 10 people though. Thanks for watching this extended free version of our Lean Training System module video. If you want to watch the whole video, check it out at Velaction Videos. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next LTS video that we post, please be sure to subscribe down below. We also always appreciate likes as it helps us get viewed more and makes us keep adding additional content. Thanks for watching and best wishes on your continuous improvement journey.